So, if you don't know who Richard Ramirez is, ooh, you're in for a shock. Cause he was a sick, deprived, devil worshiping, petty crime, thief, murderer, and sexual assaulter. And when I say that, you know what I mean. He was a papist. I'm not 100% sure I'm allowed to say that word on YouTube. So I'm a, I've seen other YouTubers say papist. So he was a papist, okay? Richard Ramirez is like up there, like up there for evil. I'm gonna go into the background and his upbringing. And I'm not going to lie, when I do tell you stories of his um, upbringing and when he went, what he went through as a child, you will sympathize with his, um, with his background because it's not pleasant and no one deserves what he went through. But what he became, the monster he became, can't be justified. It can't be justified. You know, I know hurt people hurt people, but the person he became was just so dark and so evil. And his victims didn't even have a profile. He didn't even target a certain, sometimes with trauma. So for instance, if, if, if your trauma comes from your father, sometimes you grow up to take out your anger or your crimes on men. Sometimes if your trauma comes young and it comes um, from in a form of, of a woman you can tend to take it out on women but Richard wasn't like that Richard took it out on everybody including children and elderly people you heard that right children and elderly people Richard Ramirez was born in February 1960 now let me just start make, doing my makeup because I'm getting too comfortable with this bare face. Richard Ramirez was born on the 29th of February, 1960, making him a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. So I'm like, what the F? I know like with Pisces, they're very kind people, but once you cross them, it's like game over. But oh my God, I can't believe he belongs to us. Pisces are scary. He has a few names to go with his personality and his crimes. He's known as the Valley Intruder, the Walk-In Killer, and the Night Stalker. Now, most people refer to him as the Night Stalker because most of his crimes did take place at night. In my opinion, not that you asked for it, but I'll give you my opinion. Because of how he did most of his crimes, which is which um, mostly consisted of breaking into people's homes and robbing them, sexually assaulted them, assaulting them, and obviously killing them. I don't. I, I, I don't. I, I see him as a pathetic man because I just feel like he preyed on people when they were the, their most vulnerable he's not exactly a not that you should ever ever look up to anybody who's evil but he's not exactly like you know the daring bold brave sort of criminal you know he is um a, 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 i don't know another word for pussy but going sneaking into people's houses and hurting them when they're asleep. Yeah, he's a pussy, in my opinion. So, Richard Ramirez and his family were brought up in Texas. Originally, his father was from Mexico, but he ended up immigrating to the United States of America with the whole family. Ramirez had siblings, I believe he had four brothers, um, but his father, although he worked hard, his father was a police officer. His father was a police officer and they were devout um they were devout christians i believe they were catholic so um he should have been brought up to be you know a good law-abiding citizen but unfortunately his father was quite abusive i think his father found his life or whatever demons he had because doing my research i found out that ramirez's father Richard's father was abused by his father growing up. So sometimes people like, you know, history repeats itself and the cycle continues. So he used to take this out on Ramirez. So Ramirez had quite a brutal childhood to the point when, when he was seven years old to escape his father's abuse, Richard used to go to the local graveyard and just spend time in the graveyard. 
I think he used to also sleep there. But can you imagine a child spending time in a graveyard? Were these dead bodies? It's very strange. I also want to make something very, very, very clear to you because I feel like this is quite a paramount um, part of this story. When Richard was two years old, he had an incident. A piece of furniture fell on his head and he then obviously suffered a head injury. Of course, he survived this head injury, but I want to make it very clear. People who have head injuries sometimes do tend to go on to be quite violent and brutal. It's almost as if the head injury has a traumatic impact on the brain and they almost form some sort of disorder. I'm going to list a, a few serial killers who have had in head injuries just so you can really sit and think and ponder what does a head injury do to a person there is glenn edward rogers who's known as the cross country killer and he had an ed head injury between the ages of one and two then there's richard ramirez we know he had a head injury as as a two-year-old a dresser fell on top of him and he required 30 stitches this head injury was so bad that richard ended up having seizures you know throughout his childhood which i'm sure was very unpleasant there is fred west who is known as the gloucester road murders and he was age 17 when he had his head injury and his was really bad he got a fractured skull it's also david berkowitz also known as some of son of sam and he had a head injury as a child when he was in a um horrific car accident and his head got injured pretty badly there's also robert jo joe long who suffered several injuries as a child the point i'm trying to make is there is something in the brain are these people just like us? Are they? It's really interesting because there's actually an interview with Ramirez where he talks about the fact that he believes, and no one asked this by the way, he just volunteered this information because he was in an interview in jail this is after he's been caught and he spoke about the fact that he had such a traumatic childhood that he took out his anger on the world. So he blames nurture, not nature because some people believe that serial killers and you know psychopaths are born and some people believe that they are a product of their environment he believes he was a product of environment and when i go into when i go into more details about his childhood you will see why there might be some truth to this because he had a traumatic childhood it was really bad guys really bad like it gave me chills when i was listening to the things that he went through okay okay so this is where it gets quite traumatic for Rodrigue, for Richard. As a young boy, he, he didn't like being at home because obviously he had an abusive father. So he used to hang around his cousin. He had a cousin called Miguel. And his cousin was a war veteran and his cousin fought in the Vietnam War. And his cousin was obviously older than him because he was only, he was hanging around his cousin when he was, you know, 10 years old and, and things of this nature. And his cousin had been at war. So his cousin was so much older than him. His cousin was an adult. Um, but he, he used to hang around him anyway. And his cousin, you know, he looked after his little, you know, his little, his little Richard cousin. But the problem was he used to show Richard awful, awful things. I don't know if he thought it was cool, but Miguel showed Richard pictures of some of his like i guess to him they were trophies of war like he showed people he showed richard pictures of decapitated bodies from the war people that he had killed he even showed richard pictures of women that he had sexually assaulted whilst he was serving at war in the vietnam war he was a, such a strange weird human being it's almost like i don't want to be rude but it's like richard had a terrible family like he wasn't exactly shown right or wrong or, or good or bad in fact there's a quote there is a quote from um miguel richard's cousin saying that being at war was cool seriously like it was cool because deciding who got to live or die was like playing god taken and i've changed it a little bit but that's basically what he said you know 
he used the word God. So, there's something wrong with this guy. There's actually something wrong with this guy. In England, we use the slang word called tapped when you're, you're just like, you're just a, a little bit. And I, Miguel was tapped. And imagine, he started hanging around Miguel like at a very young age. Do you, okay, obviously you, you might not know this, but Richard started smoking marijuana, aka weed, aka ganja, at 10 years old. At 10 years old. 10 years old. But what do you expect when he's hanging around Miguel, who's showing him pictures of decapitated bodies? And women he sexually assaulted. That is so strange. It's weird. So being a young boy and the fact that his father used to abuse him, he's probably really angry at, at the world. I'm not going to lie. Because he slept in a graveyard as well and he's, he doesn't have the same sort of... His, his family is, is, is a bit strange. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm sure he, socially, socially at school, he just... He, I, I don't think um he had the people skills that he needed to have because he wasn't being taught them at home about about crime and making crime look cool and he has the injury he has the head injury and he's a vulnerable young person so when he's t he's taking all of this in and he's thinking the this is normal because he has a terrible terrible childhood and the examples are around him are really terrible and ah uh, it gets even worse guys Okay, I just want to apologise if I'm being a bit slow at doing my makeup. Oh my god, just getting too into the story. So, so at the age of ten, he starts smoking weed. It might have been a coping mechanism because at the age of ten, Richard watched his cousin Miguel. Wait for it. He watched his cousin Miguel murder his wife. He watched that. It, it just how alarming is that? That is so alarming. And for some reason, um, Richard didn't tell him, tell anybody. He kept this. He kept this to himself. He kept this secret to himself. He started smoking weed at that age, and I'm not surprised because that's a very, very traumatic and horrific thing to go through at the age of ten. And then when he got a little bit older, he had a cousin called Roberto, Ro Roberto, who showed him how to be a peeping Tom. Now, a peeping Tom is a person who sneaks around people's houses and looks into their windows and just, you know, spies on them. Now, there's several reasons why you'd be a peeping Tom, but most of the reasons is because you want to see some naked ladies. You want to see some boobies. You want to see some ass, some titties. You want to see some, you know, badge. A girl did obviously sit trial for the murder of his wife however he got away with it on on um the grounds of insanity now maybe there was mental health in this family i don't know because they all seem to be a bit you know you know they, they're all they just uh, they, they 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 just don't seem okay but um he ended up not going to prison he went to a mental um institute um for a couple of years it just I don't and I, from what I've read it didn't do him any good and he didn't change at all but anyway going back to Richard Richard is now 15 years old I might do lilac guys I've never done lilac before but why not so Richard Richard is now 15 years old and he needs to make some money, so he actually gets a job at a hotel. You know, good on him, he's gonna make some money, um, earn, earn an honest living, if only it was that easy. But it isn't, he doesn't earn an honest living. Richard decides that, you know, on top of the money he's getting paid at the, um, I don't know if I want to do purple. So Richard decides that the money at the hotel isn't enough. He's, he, you know, he's been a greedy little, little man. So what he did is, obviously, you know he had the skills to break into people's homes. So he decides that he's going to use these skills. He, he wants more money. He wants more money. 
why not? Why only take minimum minimum wage for working in a hotel when you can get more? And he obviously had learned how to like pick locks. Um, I, I don't know if I, know, I, I mentioned that Richard taught him how to pick locks and just break into people's, you know, privacy and people's homes and all sorts. So now he's working in a hotel. Why is that gonna change? No, not at all. Perfect. So when he suspected that the occupants of the hotel room, you know, weren't in, maybe they'd gone for a walk or they'd gone about their day and they weren't in their room, who would break into their room and steal at 15? Yep, that's what he did. Absolutely great. One of the days, one of the days that Richard was up to no good, he decided that he was going to go into a hotel room to rob this woman that he suspected was on her own. He made a big mistake because she was only on her own for a bit. Her husband ended up coming back and guess what he found? He found Richard trying to sexually assault his wife and he beat Richard the F up. He beat him black and blue. It was so bad and they ended up obviously pressing charges to the police but then they ended up dropping the charges because in order for Richard to be prosecuted for his crimes they had to go to trial and they lived in a different state and they didn't want to take a plane or travel back for the crime or maybe the wife just wanted to forget the trauma but they used the excuse of not wanting to travel back so they didn't travel back so they stayed in their state and Richard got away with this we should got away with this but this was the first first crime the police knew of him so at this point i just want you guys to to, to take into into consideration that the police are now aware of who richard is he is on the system they have his they have his details they know who he is you have to remember the police doesn't ha the police do not have everybody's details if you've never been arrested the police won't have your fingerprints i've never been arrested so the police don't have my fingerprints so now the police have richard's fingerprints this is very important and you need to remember this because it's a paramount a paramount part of the story i just want to now talk about richard's drug use i feel like um a lot of people don't um dive into it um and i think it's kind of important so obviously he was takes um smoking marijuana from age 10 but he's got older now so marijuana isn't cutting it you know he needs to uh, you know he needs to up the levels you know he needs some stronger stuff so he starts to dabble in he starts to dabble with cocaine he starts to dabble with heroin he starts to dabble with lsd I don't know if this stuff is the same. I don't, I, and I know nothing about drugs. He um, starts to dabble with um, mushrooms. He, he just he takes a cocktail of everything. You know, he's he's definitely an, up there. He's an addict. At some point, Richard was just like a nomad. He was just like moving from one place to another place to another place. And he, he would just be high on, on stuff. And he didn't want to work for his money he just wanted to be able to live his life sleep with prostitutes have sex i um, feel like i've missed the fact that you know richard has got, has got older and remember his cousin is, his cousins have taught him to be a peeping tom his cousin has told him stories of women he sexually assaulted so at this point you know when richard is in his teens richard is into he, Richard is into like rough sex, violent sex. He's not into normal sex, you know, he's into like BDSM and like really rough sex. And it just gets, it's, it's starting to get worse and worse. So, Richard has been living a life of a low level criminal, robbing, robbing and taking drugs and just being an absolute menace to society. But at this point, he hadn't, as far as we was concerned, committed a gruesome crime such as a murder yet. According to most documents, his first murder was June 24th, 1984. However, this isn't true. His first murder was in 1984 to a 79 year old woman. That's um, what most, um, most documents on the internet when you do your research will tell you. But actually his first murder that we know of 
I have a suspicion that there was more, but the first one that we actually know of and people found out about in 2009 because, um, you know, people what because the forensic system had improved and was able to um, put Richard's DNA at the scene of the crime and they couldn't do that back in 1984. His first crime was at actually the murder of a nine-year-old little girl. I told you once you found out what he did, you wouldn't feel sorry for him anymore. So when um, he was 24, he, ugh, this story is really sad, but there was a nine-year-old girl playing with her brother outside a hotel that Richard was staying at. And apparently she went to look for a dollar bill that was at the basement. I, I don't know why it was in the basement of the hotel, but apparently her dollar bill, maybe the wind blew it into um, the basement. She went to look for the dollar bill. Richard followed her in there. And excuse me for a moment, I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. I mean, I, even though I've read it, saying it is just a bit different. Um, yeah, so he followed the little girl, the nine-year-old girl, into the basement and he sexually assaulted her and he brutally um, strangled and killed her. So yes, he brutally murdered the nine-year-old girl um, like I said, he sexually assaulted her and even stabbed her to death and then left her there by hanging her on a pipe and her little brother had to find her. He is a vile and dis oh, he's just so sorry guys. I just, <sighs> just, it's hard to talk about children. It's really hard to talk about children. Um, she was a very, you know, pretty, gorgeous, um, little girl. And she definitely didn't deserve that. Um, so it's funny because no one knew that he did this. Remembrance never spoke about it. The only reason obviously we know this now is because DNA evidence and forensics was able to tie him to this murder in 2009. So um, who knows? Maybe he knew that um, the world would judge him very harshly for um, killing a little girl and he, we would it's absolutely disgusting and vile i need you guys i need you guys to, to 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 know something else do you know you might not know this but ramirez is a very popular um serial killer part of the reason he's a popular serial killer is because of his looks he's tall he's got a chiseled like cheekbones chiseled face structure like basically the face of a model if you wanted to you could model um he's got like squinty some people could say sexy eyes listen i'm being i'm i'm just being objective here like i have to be honest he's a very good looking man he looks like a model he has very 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 bad teeth very very bad teeth because of all the drugs he's he's taken and obviously just his hygiene apparently he stopped when he became a satanist, satanist, a satanist, and started to uh, worship the devil, he decided that bathing and hygiene wasn't important, apparently. So he just didn't clean himself, and he just stunk and just was absolutely vile and decided, imagine, like, decided to sexually assault women, smelling like disease, like, what the, what the F? He's, it's very strange. But that's what he did. And, um, just absolutely gross. But, yeah, a lot of women thought he was sexy and good-looking, but guys a lot of people who were his fans because he had fans and he had groupies but a lot of these fans and groupies weren't aware of the fact that he had murdered a little girl and some of them were put off when they found out that he had murdered a little girl so basically what i'm trying to get at is they were attracted to him it was okay when he murdered adults oh, that's fine you know it's absolutely fine if someone's over the age of 18 that's perfectly fine murder them they they don't um their life doesn't matter it's justified. People are crap or whatever. But, you know, some of the groupies did... Because, um, well, obviously, this came out in 2009. Some of the groupies fell out of love with him, the bad boy that he was, the rock star serial killer that he was. I have to show you how he dr dressed. I have to show you how he dressed. But they fell, out of the, they fell out of love with the rock star serial killer once they found out that he'd murdered a little girl. Get your priorities right. 
you should not even be attracted to a serial killer even a killer what is wrong with you people better standards higher standards for yourself please darlings i'm going to go down the list of people he murdered it's it's a long list guys he has i want some to emphasize something because um it's hard to gauge because you have to remember he was convicted for 13 murders however he um he attacked over 30 people they are people who he has brutally brutally attacked and people who still have the psychological trauma of what he did to them and the physical trauma of what he did to them they are women he raped and didn't kill i just want you guys to be aware of that so um this guy he's just a dangerous he's just a dangerous guy and people should be worried but i'm gonna start with the first the first um the first recorded before the 2009 the final is he used to um steal cars remember he used to break into houses so why not break into cars he just knows how to break into stuff so he used to break into cars and steal them so he broke into this car and he was driving around driving around la looking for a victim at this point he lives in la guys remember he was brought up in texas but he lives in la at this point driving around driving around and then he comes across an apartment building and their resident in the apartment building was a woman a 79 year old woman called jenny vinco and she was sleeping he snuck into her house initially he was wearing gloves and maybe wearing a cap and all of this he usually liked to wear caps so he could hide his identity um, when he um, broke into people's homes. So he breaks into Jenny Vinko's home, wearing a cap or whatever, probably, and definitely wearing gloves. But there was a she there was the window was open. She left the window open, but she had down this sort of sheet. Yeah, she had this sort of um, window sheet. Um, you know the type of sheet. I think it, it divides. It, it doesn't let bugs get in. So he couldn't get that he couldn't get that open um, with his gloves on so he had to do it with his um with his hands so he took his gloves off and he ended up leaving his um dna fingerprint on the window anyway point is he go got into her house he searched the house i don't know how why she didn't wake up but who knows he searched the house for money which is what he always did i guess he was very good at being discreet because obviously this is what his cousin had taught him so he, he walked around the whole house looking for money looking for possessions um he didn't find anything absolutely fuming and decides cool i'm gonna take it out i mean I don't know why else he would have, att have, have attacked her. And he just went in there and he just stabbed her. Stab, 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 stab. And he just brutally murdered an innocent old woman in her bed. It was absolutely horrific. So, so after this murder, the next time he murders is, is actually, um, in, in terms of, a record is actually a while after it's almost a year off not a year, not not quite a year but almost a year after in march of 1985 when he was a woman called maria hernandez to her house so that he can rob and murder her so they get to the garage and he pulls out he this this story is crazy he they get to the garage and he um, at this point, he has a gun. At this point, um, he's upgraded. He needs a weapon. He 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 can't just he can't just be going around stabbing people. That's juvenile for somebody, I guess, of of his nature. You know, he needs to upgrade his weapon of choice. So he ends up buying a twenty two caliber pistol on the streets of Los Angeles or whatever. Um, probably in the hood or something. Some some somewhere you know where there's a lot of crime or whatever follows maria hernandez home they get to the garage he pulls his um his gun out to shoot her and she just just by the grace of luck she raises her hands in a panic because she's scared she's worried oh my god i'm gonna die and her key as he shoots her key gets in the way of the bullet of course she still falls to the ground but she actually isn't pierced by the bullet so she doesn't her injuries are never fatal because the bullet grazed the key and that was just 
by the grace of luck. However, unfortunately, she does have a roommate. So she was 22 and she lived with a 34-year-old woman called Dale Okazaki. And unfortunately for Dale, she was hiding in the kitchen because she heard all the ongoings that were going, going on outside. She heard all the hustle and the fuss. She's hiding in the kitchen and she peeps out. And unfortunately for her, she wasn't as lucky. She gets shot and she loses her life. So at this point, as far as we're aware, he has his second, so, oh my God, his third victim. His third victim and they're all women and it's just so disgusting. It's just really bad. So this story gets even crazier. I know, I haven't been doing my makeup, guys. This is meant to be mystery, murder mystery and makeup. I'm gonna do my wings off camera. I couldn't do that whilst talking. Ugh, wing liner was talking, impossible. But yes, you will not believe how crazy this story gets. On the same day, I don't know if he just woke up and chose violence, but on the same day, guys, he decides that it's not enough that he just attacked two women. He needs another victim. He, he literally attacks a woman who's in her car. Can you imagine being in your car when you're in your car you feel sa you sit you feel safe because you're in your car you don't feel like you're gonna get attacked by a random person when you're in your car but no he he attacks this woman who she, when she's in her car minding her business i believe her name was sa lan yu i'm so sorry if i'm saying that wrong but i believe her name was sa lan yu he attacked her while she was in her car and brutally murdered her on the same day so he's taken three victims on that day i believe I have no proof, but I just believe on that day he was definitely under the influence. You have to remember, guys, he took all the drugs. He took all the drugs, so let me know whether you agree with me or whether you think I'm agree with me or whether you think I'm reaching. I might be reaching. You might think that he was just a nutter, but you might just think that he was a cold-blooded killer. But three? Three? I also feel like his attacks were, were, they weren't very planned and thought out. They were sporadic, crazy, almost, almost based off emotion. I feel like his attacks were just spur of the moment, reckless, reckless, no, th no thought, no reason. It, there wasn't even a method, you know, there wasn't even a, um, a group of people being targeted i just feel like it was just so uh, erratic that to me it doesn't come across as a person who is has it all the way together all the way together mentally because this wasn't revenge unless revenge was for the entire world it just didn't make it doesn't make sense to me why he just attacks everyone and anybody so he um richard believed that he was working under the instruction of Satan. He was, you know, he was a, 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 a Satanist. To the point where when I was doing my research, I found out that he even went to the, the ch there is a church of Satan in America, I know. He went to attend the church of Satan um, just to see, you know, just to meet people like-minded and things of that nature. But un unfortunately, the Church of Satan, the, the leader of it, who actually remembers him, says he was a lovely guy, but he says that, you know, the ideologies that they they preach in their church is more to do with atheism. So basically they denounce like that God exists, etc. But they don't really promote violence and evil and things of that nature. So, you know, Richard was in, in, in on his own with that one he was in a world of his own because the church of satan didn't encourage m murder and rape and all things of that nature they just were atheists and didn't believe in god so but that's how far he took his religion um i have to make it very clear that he made a lot of his victims also swear on satan before he killed them or whatever he would make them swear on satan on March the 27th, 1985, Richard took his fourth and fifth victims. He was driving around as he usually does and he ended up breaking into the house 
house of a 64 year old man and a 44 year old woman they were a married couple to the house of vincent vincent and maxine zazara as he enters the house of course the man tries to defend his home defend his wife and they get into an altercation and richard ends up um shooting him to death he then bounds the wife the and sexually assaults her as he usually does and then rummages through the house looking for money and possessions that he can pawn and use to obviously fund his habits the thing that's crazy about this particular incident is the woman could have survived even though she was bound and tied up she managed to free herself and they had a weapon underneath the bed so she got hold of the gun and she met Richard face to face and she aimed at Richard and she should have taken him out she should have taken him all the way out but unfortunately the gun wasn't loaded so the poor lady literally literally that was her only chance and it was just taken away from her literally taken away from her she must have been so crushed i can't imagine how she felt and richard in anger when he saw that she tried to kill him he went absolutely crazy and he shot her he shot her three times and stabbed her to death absolutely vile I just want you guys to realize that this, this was March the 27th and the crime before that was March the 17th. So this was only 10 days later. He is so angry at the fact that she's actually fought back. What does he expect? Of course, she's going to try and fight back. Who wouldn't? I know some people, they fly or what is called fly or fight. I know everyone reacts differently, but it is a good thing to try and defend yourself and fight for your life. Well, how can you get angry at somebody fighting back when you're trying to murder them? But you know, in his brain, this makes sense. And he gets so angry, so livid that he, um, like I said, he shoots her three times and then he goes to the kitchen, gets a knife, stabs her. Then this is where he gets really sick. He got, God, I can't even say the word. I'm just gonna, don't laugh at me. He gorges her eyes out. He gorges her eyes out. And he puts them in a jewelry box. Her eyes, her eyes in a jewelry box. And everyone, you know, everyone says that your eyes are your windows to your soul. So I don't know if he knew or thought that was the ultimate disrespect. You have to remember, he's a Satan worshiper. He probably does believe in like spirituality to a certain degree, if he believes in friggin' Satan and you know, religion. And the eyes are the window to the soul. So he thinks that he's probably doing the ultimate disrespect. This is what I believe, this is what I've read into this. At the end of the day, it makes sense as he is a spiritual person, as he does believe in God he believes in Satan so on and so forth he puts them in a jewelry box and we don't know what the F happens to them after that I believe he keeps them but we don't, uh, don't get me wrong I'm not saying that I would ever 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 want to be murdered but I would definitely not like someone to take my eyes out and keep them that is effing weird and I just think a level of disrespect a level of disrespect okay so listen to this when Richard ends up leaving the scene, he leaves a few clues for the police. Not on purpose, obviously, he's not that smart. Um, so he ends up leaving footprints in the flower beds that are um, just outside the house. So he was wearing a size 11 and one second, because I don't know what the shoe is. I'm so sorry. I'm going to Google it, of course, but I don't know what it is because I, I don't know that people wear it where I'm from, which is London. But it's called a Avias. Avias, have I said that right, Avias? So he's wearing size 11 Avias shoes and they make a mold of the shoe. And it so happens that the shoe isn't super popular in America. 
so it's, it so happens that the shoe is not super popular so they're able to go and um, contact the manufacturer and try and find out where these shoes have been sold and how many people bought a size 11 the bullets the bullets he uses in the gun he's so sloppy why would he even leave the bullets but the bullets that he um, that he uses one second so like I was saying he is so sloppy the bullets the bullets that he used at the crime scene are left at the crime scene so um they also take that as a copy and it so happens that the bullets match the the other bullets at the other crime scenes and this is the first time and this is a paramount part of the story because this is the first time that the police start to realize that they have a serial killer on their hands at this point before this they hadn't they hadn't put two and two together and been able to connect the dots and realize it was the same person that was breaking into people's houses and you know raping killing murdering them stealing from them etc so this is the first time that they think these all these crimes are being done by the same person which is like a really big breakthrough in the investigation for the police so on may 14th 1985 by the way all these crimes happened in 1985 okay but on, so on may 14th 1985 um richard goes down to monterey park and he goes he finds this home where an older couple are living there is a married couple bill and lillian doyle bill was in his 60s and lillian was like 56 but she was disabled so bill looked after her so richard gets in the house and he they slept in separate bedrooms and i think this is because of of course she was disabled so she needed like a lot of care so it was more comfortable for her to have her own space the wife lillian is quite poorly and she's disabled and her husband looks after her i know it's really 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 sad and really bad but this doesn't stop the night stalker so this story is quite sad so bill happens to be in the bedroom richard enters the bedroom obviously the man is alarmed he's really alarmed he goes to grab his gun and as he does so Richard just shoots him point blank in the face like a cold-blooded killer. In the face! I just feel like he's just so disrespectful with it. Richard starts to look around the house as he usually does, looking for possessions, looking for things to sell, looking for money, looking for valuables so he can, you know, make some money to fund his um, useless useless life. And um, he so, he happens to obviously come across Lillian's room. He enters her room and he ends up sexually assaulting her the thing i find strange and don't judge me don't judge me is um i just feel like he was and he's made this clear of course because he worships satan but i just feel like he's quite he, he's just very very strange and very very satanic and i feel like he his buzz wasn't necessarily from doing stuff to people that he he like you know wanted or was attracted to necessarily i feel like he just felt loved the feeling of overpowering a weaker individual because the thing that i find strange about him compared to other serial killers is a lot of them have a type so for instance there are gay serial killers who only kill gay men etc there was this one serial killer that only like he, he was a white man but he only like killed black women like people have a thing for or, or, or if, if you know if your children is your thing obviously god forbid but if children's your thing they tend to do that but like he it's like everyone can have it he's literally you know sexually assaulting children like he even though i've spoken about the nine-year-old girl there was another woman that's come out and spoken about the fact that he her i'm gonna put a very short clip of her speaking um, i told them they didn't believe me yeah he did whatever to her too so he was out here sexually assaulting children but then he would also he also sexually assaulted the 44 year old woman and he wants to sexually assault this 80 year old woman i just think it was a power thing um he just he needs help he's disgusting Lillian ended up surviving her attack. Fortunately, the husband, though, he died on the way to the hospital. 
so he wasn't dead initially when um, he was shot. So on May 29th, Richard ends up stealing a Mercedes car and driving to the home of two elderly sisters. They're both in the 80s. Their names are Mabel and Florence and he ends up breaking into their home as he usually does. Richard when he breaks into the into the, the sister's home, he runs into Florence's room first. Okay, first he goes to the kitchen and grabs a hammer and he runs into Florence's room first and he batters Florence and then he runs into Mabel's room. He bounds her, so he ties her up and he, and he hits her, then he grabs an electric cord. But I want to say something really weird, yeah? For some reason on this day he doesn't have his he doesn't have his usual tool. That's another thing that's strange about him compared to other serial killers. They usually do the same sort of act over and over again. I don't know if he was scared that the police were kind of, you know, looking for him and onto him at this point, because obviously they were. So I don't know if that's why he changes tactics and starts to use a hammer, because he does have the 22 calibre pistol. He then proceeds to give both women electric shocks with this electric cord. I think he wanted to see people suffer. Maybe, who knows, the fun had been taken away. The, the fun of everything had been friggin' was dying. It was too easy when he just shot them point blank. So he's he keeps shocking them with, with this, he keeps shocking them with this electric cord. And then he goes to Florence and he sexually assaults Florence, who's in her 80s. This man has no type. He goes from a child to an elderly woman and he he penetrates. I just think he loved the buzz of being able to overpower a weak or less, a, a weaker mind, a weaker person, somebody who was vulnerable. You know, he was sick in his head. So yes, he rapes her and then he goes to Mabel and he draws the sign of the um of satan or the devil went in there like their strongest best like shape of their life um but they both happened to survive because they were found bound in the house two days later and they both survived their attacks obviously they left they they lived with the um mental anguish and trauma but this is another this is another side to this and i want you guys to comment below why does he kill some but not others you know maybe I don't know. Is it because some are pretty or some remind him of his uh, family member? Like, they must be a method to the madness. Why sometimes, oh yeah, today I feel like making sure you, you don't see tomorrow and then the next day, I'm gonna pardon you. I'm just gonna have fun with you and I'm gonna let you live to tell my tale. Maybe he wanted people to tell his tale. Mmm, I think I'm onto something there. I think I'm on. He wanted people to, he wanted to go down in history. That must be the only reason he would allow some people to stay alive so they could talk about the trauma and the anguish and the terror of what they went, what he put them through. So on July 2nd, he ends up stealing a, Toyo, a Toyota and then he said he randomly because you know he, nothing is thought out he randomly selects M um mary's house so when he gets into the house he finds her he finds her in her bedroom this is what i mean about him being a pussy he finds her in her bedroom asleep he finds her in her bedroom and asleep and he just attacks her he attacks her he beats her to death he rummages the house for valuables again and he leaves at this point you know when he's he's done this to mary he actually hasn't um the last attack was actually if you think about it the last attack was going on oh my god the last attack was going on two months you know sometimes he goes crazy and in a month he can do like five attacks or four attacks or in the same day remember he did he, he attacked somebody twice in a day so he'd actually waited two months which is you know shocking for him on july 7th he ends up breaking into this lady's house. She's in her 60s. Her name is Joyce Nelson. And this is um, this was another time that the police got another clue because he ended up um, kicking her. He ended up kicking her and just beating her to death. And he ended up leaving his shoe print on her body, which police again could use for evidence and, you know, in their um, forensics. 
So at this point, Richard thinks that, you know, I don't know if he's bored of his tools or he doesn't want to use his hands or his, I don't have no idea what's happened to his pistol. You know, maybe he lost it, I don't know. Um, but maybe he couldn't afford bullets, you know, I don't know. But he thinks, you know, I need, I, I need a new tool. I just think he wanted variety. I think he got bored easily. So he's thinking, I need a new tool. So he goes in, in, in search of a machete. How, do you know how brutal a machete is? I don't know if you've heard this theory, guys, so I'm going to give you a quick summary of this theory I've heard. And I believe it. That's why I'm telling you about it. So these, when it comes to murder, you can murder someone on a, in a personal way. This is if you have the choice. In England, we don't really have the choice because firearms are, like, heavily, like, you know, illegal. So, you know, people usually use to kill people. But I'm saying if you have access to a firearm. So, um, a personal way to kill someone is to go close to them and use a tool like a and it's very personal it's very in your face a impersonal way like basically if you you know you don't want to um deal with um if you don't want to deal with it you don't want to get close is obviously to use a firearm because you can do it from a distance you don't have to actually touch the person you don't have to put force so it can be it's it's a way to distance yourself from it so now that we see Richard buying a machete, because he's killed in every way. He's used his arms, so he's definitely been personal. He's used the ting, he's used everything. So now he's going for, you know, a machete. He just loves the gore of it. He loves the gore and the, the just the gruesomeness of it. He wants it to be as gruesome, as gory, as nasty as possible, because he's sick in the head news for Richard, he gets to use the machete. On July 20th, he ends up breaking into the home of a couple in their 60s. Their names are Layla and Maxon. He finds them in their bedroom, minding their business and sleeping, and he uses his machete and just absolutely slaughters them. There's actually a quote of him saying that he loves blood everywhere. He's just a sick guy. So after he attacks them with the machete, listen to this. Listen to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come closer. After he, sorry, not shoots them. After he attacks them with the machete and, you know, absolutely like bludgeons them and does the most gruesome, terrible, horrific, you know, act, he thinks, oh, that's not enough. And he goes and he uses, what, remember I thought that he got rid of the pistol? Oh no. He gets the pistol and he shoots them both in the head. He could have done that in the first place, it would have died quicker. But you know what? He wanted them to suffer. He is disgusting. He is disgusting. He could have shot them in the head and they would have done instantly, but he used the machete because he enjoyed the act of them suffering. I actually believe that, you know, this man, we sh like he should have been put somewhere in the middle of Oxford Street or in America, New York, or whatever. And people should have come with a with a, with a knife, a little standing knife, and just cut a piece, piece by piece, people should have been cutting him. He should have suffered the ultimate pain. Right below what's worse than that, because I don't know what the ultimate pain is. What's, what's the ultimate pain? Like, because maybe that was crap. But do you get where I'm coming from? He used a machete because he wanted blood and he liked pain. Terrible, terrible. Terror, who likes, who wants to see people suffer? Who actually wants to see people suffer? So then on the same night, oh yeah, he wasn't done. He was, he must have been loving this new machete life. So on the same night at 4 a.m., he finds another couple and they have, they happen to have a son. Excuse me, I'm gonna try and pronounce their names, but it's not that easy. Shayna Wrong and Some Kid. These, this, this couple happened to have a eight-year-old. So he, at four o'clock in the morning, remember he's just got two bodies on him yeah with that machete and now he's gone into a new home where there's a couple with eight-year-old he breaks in when he enters the house he goes into the bedroom he attacks the couple and there's a commotion the eight-year-old comes into the bedroom you know looking for mum and dad looking to see what's the matter he he bounds the eight-year-old and and commands the eight-year-old to take him around the whole house because he wants some money, some valuables. So the eight-year-old takes him around the house and then he leaves. He doesn't eat, he doesn't harm the kid. He, and, and the couple survived. So he didn't actually, you know, 
bludgeon them as much as he bludgeoned the couple before which is so strange how he picks and chooses who he's going to be more gruesome to too but maybe because he had a taste for it earlier almost like food like i'm a bit full now so you know i don't need to i just want to taste you but i don't need to f gobble you all up i don't know if it's like that but yes they survive the eight-year-old also ends up um you know releasing himself from the bounds and running to the neighbor's house to call for help so on august 6th he ends up breaking into the home of chris and virginia 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 Virginia, oh my god, sorry, I can't even say her name. So he ends up breaking into their home on the 6th of August. So Chris and Virginia um, Peterson. And um, he ends up attacking them. But they both also survive the attack. Like I said, he picks and chooses. I also want to say that Chris and, Virgi and Virginia were... Um, relatively young compared to some of the people he'd, he, he'd been recently attacking. The husband was in his 40s, the wife was in her 30s. So I don't know if that helped them survive their injuries. So like I said, on August the 8th, which is two days later, he ends up breaking into the ho family home where there was a three-year-old and a couple. Uh, the couple was called Sakina and Elias. He ended up killing Elias, who was the man, but he ended up sexually assaulting the, uh, the, he bounded her and sexually assaulted um, the woman who has survived. And she has um, stated that when he was attacking her, he kept telling her to swear on the devil, to swear on Satan, to swear on Satan. It's so bizarre. At this point, the police were obviously getting a lot of murders they were getting a lot of victims a lot of um survivors as well and they weren't any they weren't any step closer to finding they weren't any closer to finding the night stalker they needed help so they made a press conference and basically this is the first time the first time in this whole story that they had told the public about the night stalker before this point the public didn't know so they were at their own risk i guess they thought they would find him and it was better to find him without him knowing that they were on his neck and they were chasing him so at the press conference they re they, re they they basically warn everybody that they are they they could be next everybody should lock their windows their doors anyone can get it because this guy doesn't have a type he doesn't have a profile anyone can get it so they warn everybody but the la detectives are quite upset because they fear that richard could be watching he's gonna see this and then he's gonna move smarter he could flee we're never gonna get him so they didn't want to use this this um this method however they were wrong because this method is the it actually really did help however not straight away richard then obviously watched the press conference in the press conference they mentioned that um they um had footprint of his shoes and stuff and they mentioned that to people so maybe if they see a guy who matches his description with those shoes on they should just watch out because he is the night stalker so that's why they've you know they've told him about the shoes and what he wears so richard hears this he's watching this he then drives to san francisco to the golden gate bridge and he throws his size 11 whatever them shoes are called and he throws them off the bridge so that nobody can find him also want to say something richard was really really he, he tried to be smart sometimes every time he you know he liked to steal cars but he couldn't keep him for too long because obviously once a car stolen someone will report it and then he might get stopped and found so richard used to steal cars and have them for a short period of time and he used to always wipe down the car wipe down the car so richard thought that he wasn't leaving any traces but of course he was leaving some traces he wasn't that smart so guys he ends up attacking yep yeah, he ends up attacking three more homes um, and they all seem to survive the attacks but something happens which is crazy on the 24th of August he attacks the wrong house it's a family house and there was a very 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 brave young man a 13 year old young man sorry he's not even a man he's a child he's a teenager there's a 13 year old um, boy who lives in the house we thank God for him he is so brave so brave 
So this is so paramount. He ends up going back to LA and you know, he gets the urge again. He wants to kill, he wants to murder. So he finds, yes, so the little boy, who's th the, the 13 year old boy, his name is James. And he obviously lives in the house of his mum and dad. And he's awake when the night stalker is lurking outside his parents' window. And obviously his parents' window must be relatively close to his room. And he sees um, the night stalker. So he runs to his parents' room and he tells them, oh my God, this, I, at, at this point, remember, everybody is aware of the night stalker. Everyone has been made aware that there's a guy who's going to try and break into your house and kill you. So, as a kid, he is paranoid. He's like, oh my God, it's the night stalker. So he goes, he tells his parents, and he's right, obviously. He tells his parents, and um, the parents, everyone gets scared, and everybody starts to make noise, and like, just make it very aware to Richard that we know you, you we know it's you, we know it's you, and we've got weapons. You come in here, we're gonna shoot your face. Or you, we don't know what they said, you know. That's kind of what I would say. As I was saying, they're making a commotion. You know, they're probably saying things like, we've called the police. The police are on their way. We know it's you. You're the night stalker. Yeah? Yeah. We know you're outside there. Um, and they're calling the neighbor. Who knows? I would be like, literally like, call the neighbors now. Tell everyone on the street to come to this house now. Like, I would just be like going, I'll be bugging, call the neighbors. And I'll, I'll fake it. I'll be on the phone like, yo, Barry, the night stalker's at my house. Get in now. Get in now. We're going to kill him. We're going to kill him. You know, I'd be on the phone. I would just be... I'll be calling, faking out, but I would actually really be calling everybody that I know. The police, my mom, my grandmother, my my, my, my granddad, my, my, like my sister, like everyone needs to get here now. Everyone. I would be calling every single neighbour on the street, like literally, like I would be on Instagram live. You know I would be on Instagram. I'll be on Instagram live saying, this is my house, everyone needs to get here now because the night stalker is trying to murder us. We're going to kill him. You know, I'll just be being extra really F. So who knows what they did, but you know, when it's life or death, you have to do the most. So they obviously like, they, they, um, they made commotion. He abandoned cause he actually got scared because remember, like I said in the beginning, he's a pussy and he never wants a fair fight. He always wants to catch people off guard and when they're the most vulnerable, you know, he never wants a fair fight. So he abandoned it. And then this is where it gets magical and amazing. The little boy, James. The little boy, James, runs outside when, um, so the night stalker grabs a car, Richard, grabs a random car, break, pick, picks the lock or whatever, breaks in, um, starts to drive off, it's an orange, it's a definitely an orange car, but I can't remember the make, and he goes outside with a paper and pen and jots down the name of the car, the make, I don't know where he got the balls to do this, and I don't know why the parents let him i guess i don't want to judge but what the hell you know isn't that your job to protect your child like why is a child protecting you but he anyway we thank god for james because he he, he runs outside jots down the number plate um oh my god i've got the number plate because i watched i watched him i watched him talk about it i saw it in the interview the number plate is 482 rts and they asked him this years later when he was a grown adult and he just recited it just like that you know that's when you know that trauma is real trauma is real trauma is really real so obviously at this point like sorry i'm i've got excited and hyped now because for me this is the best part of the story the best part of the story is when he gets caught of course because he, I don't I don't like it when people get away for heinous crimes. I like them to get caught. So I love this part of the story. And the license plate? 482 RTS. So, you know, this is where it gets good. They end up finding, don't judge me pulling my wig. They end up finding the car on August 28th, which is only four days later. Because obviously, Richard has to abandon the car. Like he always, you remember Richard always wipes down cars, abandons cars, because they're all stolen. He can't keep them. So he, they end up finding the car four days later amazing and um he thought that he had wiped it clean but on this occasion he had effed up he had effed up 
and he had left a fingerprint on the car and this is the first time the first time they had a major 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 lead major lead major breakthrough in the case they took the um the fingerprint to whatever lab they take these fingerprints to whatever forensic place they take these um fingerprints to and guess what they put it in the database bing, bing, bing. There, they had the identity revealed of the night stalker, Richard Ramirez. <gasps> Richard Ramirez! So guys, they, obviously the police know who it is now, but they obviously, they need to find him. So they end up holding another media conference just to show the public who they're looking for and to reveal who the night stalker is. In the press conference, they also address him publicly. They're like, Richard, we know who you are. There's nowhere to run. Everyone in the country knows who you are. So basically hand yourself in. But obviously he's not gonna do that. He wants to escape. He wants a getaway plan. So what he decides to do is he takes a bus to Tucson to go to live with his brother. I guess at this time, his brother is completely unaware of the fact that his brother is like one of the most wanted men in the country. Richard doesn't end up going to see his brother I, I don't know whether he not really sure the reason not sure if he chickens out but he just doesn't end up going to be with his brother he ends up going back to LA and on August 31st he's walking around LA and he sees this newsstand and he literally poos his pants because he sees, sees his picture literally on the front cover of every newspaper and this is the first time he realizes the Gravi the gr gravity of how bad he's wanted, how much they're looking for him, how much trouble he's in. Richard panics and obviously like he needs to escape, he needs, like he needs to get out now. So he runs across um, the road and he ends up on a highway and he tries to hijack a woman, he tries to pull this woman out of her car, tries to hijack her car, but this is in broad daylight, there are people there, the people that can see him. So um, a lot of people come to the woman's rescue and start like fighting him off type of thing. So he just has to like, abort mission, abort mission. He's running, 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 running over fences. I feel like him, I know that people are looking for him, but I feel like him running is making it more suspicious. I feel like um, he was better like going, if it was me, I would have like gone somewhere really quiet, like a park, like really quickly or an alleyway. And I would have just sat there, sat there for absolute ages until everyone had gone home and then maybe figured out a way to, somewhere to go for the night. But I would have kept my head down, but he's running. I just think like, I understand that he's panicking, but I just feel like it's really stupid. So, he tries to hijack two more cars. So I'm gonna tell you the story um, as best as I can remember it. So the first car he tries to hijack is out, sorry, the second car he tries to hijack um, is in, he goes basically to the hood in LA and he sees this, because remember he likes vulnerable people. So he sees this woman outside her car, outside a bakery and he tries to attack her, but he fails because nearby is her boyfriend. I think her boyfriend might be in the bakery. So her boyfriend comes out, sees him, uh, like runs up to him and basically com uh, like attacks him and a group of people join in. He then panics and, and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs. He's jumping over fences, jumping over, like just like jumping different roads. Like he's, he's, he's gone crazy, but he's being chased. And then he gets to another road and he sees another woman outside her house getting into her car and he tries to hijack her car. Luckily, her husband is in the house. He runs out with a metal rod, hits Richard on the floor and batters him, batters him, batters him, batters him. So Richard's plan was to escape to Mexico. That is why it was a, it was paramount and so important that he got a car. That's why he's doing all of this. So where he ends up is the hood and he's literally, like I said, he's in the hood. And the two, the two cars that he tried to hijack belonged to a woman called, the first woman was called Manuela and the second woman was Angie Dortella. Angie Dortella or Angie Dortelli 
so those are the two women but like i said men came to their rescue he's been chased by a group so he's failed and those men they literally call the police on him after they've battered him and he's on the floor of course he can't get up he's literally been battered and beaten black and blue and um the police come and they have their man they were just so brutal they didn't take it easy on him at all they used um their hands they used their feet they used barbecue tools they were just absolutely gruesome they used everything to um to beat up richard and he deserved it it actually took two years for a pre a, prelim a preliminary hearing to take place because of how many counts were against him the weird thing and i've mentioned this earlier is once richard's case went public the media obviously went crazy they loved it and um richard then develops like a fan base like legit groupies like he's a rock star and he plays up to this and he dresses legit like he's a rock star he plays up to it he's loving the attention a lot of people think he murdered for attention but then i don't know i feel like he didn't really want to get caught because he was running to Mexico. But now he's got caught, he might as well live up to it, right? So, Richard, at some point, people say he had loads of girlfriends, like 15 or 16 girlfriends, because he's writing letters back and forth with all these women. And these women were defending him, these women were saying he's innocent. What? It was so, it's so crazy, you know? Also, I wanna let you guys know, that the groupies had a name. The groupies were called the Women in Black. Like, that's an insult because The Men in Black is a, an amazing movie and The Women in Black insinuates something cool and it's not cool. So I really hate the fact that they had such a cool name. Richard gets sentenced on September 30th and he was found guilty on everything, on all grounds, on all the things that were put against him. So this is what, I've written it down because I'm, I'm not going to remember this. So he was found guilty of 13 counts of murder five counts of attempted murder, 11 counts of sexual assault, and 14 counts of like burglary and like, you know, breaking into people's homes and stuff. He was sentenced to be, to be, to, to death in gas chambers. Oh my God, I can't believe like, they kill people in a gas chamber. But yeah, they, he was sentenced to um, death in a gas chamber. But guys like he, sometimes when they do this they make the person sit in jail you know rotting away for like 30 years waiting for their death he was i know this is going to sound strange because he was 25 but his death was supposed to happen around his 70s can you imagine 70s but it never even ever happened because he died in his 50s he died of liver failure and hepatitis c and they a lot of people think that his drug abuse contributed a lot to that now really quickly before i go i want to talk about the woman he married he was he married a woman whilst he was on trial and all this rubbish um her name was doreen loy lai loy whatever he married her like i said she was attracted to him from the moment she found out that he was a bad boy the moment she found out that he was a and all this stuff and she thought it was sexy and all of that oh, with his disgusting teeth very strange but yeah she was obsessed with him they ended up getting married and having like a jail wedding um she wrote him back and forth i think they wrote each other like 70 letters um but then she ended up giving up on him and divorcing him once in 2009 they proved with dna and forensics that he raped and murdered the nine-year-old girl and once she found out that he touched children she was disgusted and she wanted no part and she just abandoned him and people don't know where she is now so yeah she's a bit of a weirdo because it's not okay when it's a little girl but it's okay when it's an innocent woman or an old man or just a, a man minding his business a father it's okay when it's that very very strange very, very i'm gonna show a picture of her i don't think he loved her i don't think he gave a f about her i think he was using her um like, he couldn't love anyone he's a weird satan satanist but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed my story i know it went on for ages but um i hope it 
bringing you another one real real soon make sure you subscribe to my channel like comment and please below tell me who you want me to cover because i've only covered this one person so oh my god like the world's our oyster oh my god the world's our oyster let's talk about it and guys i just want you to take from this the lessons that's why we're here it's educational at the end of the day you know just be aware that there are people in this world who are evil or a bit wrong or a bit in the head you know that we're heads a bit you know so be careful always look over your shoulder i always do always look over your shoulder don't walk with you um with, with music in both ears late at night in the dark on an alleyway where you're by yourself you know and lock your doors and just just be aware of the fact that people are, are not okay look out for red flags be safe just be aware okay love y'all mm -hmm. They call me Lonnie Good Good, but I'm a bad B. They stay looking, but these brothers can't have me.